As I foreshadowed with my eerie silence at the start of stream, it's time for some some daggers and poison slash the free win against the heart class. Let's jump right on into it. No slime boss, please. Hooray, not a slime boss. Okay, interesting late elites here. Almost mandatory, but not quite. I am now counting campfires. Eh, not a very uh, it's not a not a very high yield act is how I would call this. Not a lot of options. It's part of partly why, like there's this all of this unused space here that the spire could be like filling with content. So it's like nah, it's only gonna be two paths to the boss. Just gonna not ha not use the whole left half of the map. Whatever. So I've got some options here. The early store does make losing all my money for a random relic a little bit less appealing. Um, do we have the safe path that would let me take a... Yeah, we have a pretty safe path that would let me take a uh, boss relic if I wanted one. Though I've been favoring more and more the Ring of the Snake on Silent. It's just really nice to draw two cards on turn one. We could go for a transform, turning a strike into who knows what. If we get a good card, it might let us take on an early elite. If we get a not a good card, then we can work with that. And ultimately, we have one less strike in the deck. So that's not too bad. A rare Relic could certainly be worth it. There's a lot of very powerful Rare Relics in the game. Just means no store. Let's try it. Oh. oh, 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 that's a good one. That's a very good one. This is probably actually I want to. I would want to call this the second strongest non-boss relic in the game. Probably second only to Dead Branch, Pocket Watch. Although on Silent, it's a little less impactful. But whenever you play three or less cards during your turn, draw three additional cards at the start of your next turn. Pocket Watch may be your second favorite relic of the game. Hey, how's it going, Sneaky Teak? Pocket Watch is... My current opinion on Pocket Watch is that it's too strong. It, I think it should be nerfed down to two. But I'm the wrong half of the camera here. Uh, my current thoughts on Pocket Watch are that if you... If you get Pocket Watch in Act 1 on Ironclad, it's kind of a free win, basically. Like, if, if you lose from there, then you've done something wrong. On silent, it's uh, it's not as guaranteed, but it does mean we're going to be much more leaning towards high cost cards, so that we can take advantage of this extra card draw every turn. Um, so let's just head up the middle here. I am a lot more inclined to take an early elite with a frickin' pocket watch. Like the the stuff we can do to most of the elites, we would need an answer to Legavulin before I'm really willing to um, to fight this elite. Which would mostly mean like a a bouncing flask would would be the best answer. We'll see if we get that. So rather than doing the three additional damage with neutralize, like I'm gonna actually we're gonna, just gonna take the one damage so I can neutralize, strike. Do I want to play the strike or do I want to draw three more cards? Get the strike played rather than triggering pocket watch there. And again, I'm going to choose to take a little bit of damage. Because I know the Jaw Worm fight is uh, not a favorable one to Silent over the long term. That's just a kill. Cool. Gambler's Brew. Discard any number of cards and draw that many. With our Pocket Watch, that's even stronger as a potion. Endless Agony is interesting. We can... We can do weird things with Endless Agony. It really doesn't go well with the Pocket Watch, but at the same time, yes it does. <laughs> it totally does go well with the Pocket Watch. Because we can we can draw a whole bunch of cards and play a lot of them. Um, and then the next turn, like, set that up again.
As it stands, I'm not really in favor of any of these cards. They they all have negative interaction with the pocket watch. None of them do a whole lot for us. I think we can skip these. I do have to take a card at this choice, though. I can't skip here. It's not an option. Okay, I'm definitely not gonna trade my draw three for three damage. So we're not playing that neutralize. I'm unlikely to draw lethal next turn if I play another s Well, I only need two strikes, right? I'm still unlikely to draw that. Not gonna play a card. Cool, we got the three strikes that I figured we would draw if we drew eight cards. Decker Spray's fine. Sneaky Strike is also kind of fine, although this, this is again a card that encourages you to play more than three cards per turn. It's definitely not terrible here. I do think I like Dagger Spray more, just for the the good AoE damage it does. So we're gonna grab that. Feel okay about it. Spin the wheel. No curse, please. Anything else is fine. Come on, come on. Yay! Not a curse. I'll take it. Prize? Ow. So that's 14. Next turn I'm drawing a lot of damage. I'll guarantee draw the Dagger Spray if I don't play another card here. So let's do that. Power Potion is definitely nice, and a dash is exactly, exactly the card that we're looking for. This dash alone takes me from being afraid of this elite to being like, let's get him. We can absolutely take the elite with a dash in our deck. Absolutely. And it's exactly the kind of card we're going to want in the long run. A two-cost card that does a lot of stuff, that lets us keep drawing a lot of cards with Pocket Watch. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Okay, I could do Neutralize, Dagger Spray, Defend, Defend, take nothing. That should be fine for next turn, too. I'll we'll get our Pocket Watch draw, and that's okay. Let's get it this turn. Another example of, well, we're taking one if I don't play that. Alright. I think I can get away with not playing it. Actually, not drawing the dash even worked out favorably. So it's better not to draw cards? Sometimes that's true. Sometimes it's better not to draw cards. It's always, it's always weird to figure out when you're in that kind of situation. I didn't know that I was in that situation. It just happened. Um, Piercing Whale is... A card that I like. Blur with Pocket Watch is also, like, kind of nice. Finisher, not a card we're excited about. It's certainly not something we're going to end up wanting if we have a Pocket Watch. We could use the Pocket Watch to set up really good Finisher turns, though. So, like, kind of? But either way, I think it's easy to just justify the Piercing Whale. We have enough damage, I'm hoping, to beat the Elites, especially with a Power Potion that we'll probably end up using here. Yeah, especially if it's Gremlin Knob, especially if it's Gremlin Knob. And Venom seems fine to get into play for free here. This is going to turn off the Pocket Watch for next turn, mind you. That's interesting. But that's quite a bit of poison damage we're going to be able to do, especially with the multi-hit from Dagger Spray. Caltrops is only three every time he hits us, not too much. We could take a Wraith Form and not play it yet. 
that's the other option. Becoming intangible on turn, like, three or four. But I think the extra damage from Envenom is just gonna be better. Especially with four poison coming down on turn one. Do I dare play a block card here? I don't think so. I think we're just going to take this 12 and be okay with it. And hopefully draw into dash next turn. Perfect. So I could survive at a full block if I want. Next turn we are drawing all of these cards. So let's evaluate health on Mr. Gremo Nabo here. He is currently at 32 with 6 poison, so he's going to be at 26 health with 5 poison, so he's effectively at 21 health. So all we need to do is 18 damage, which Neutralize Strike 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 does. So we can play Survivor, full block this hit, and kill him next turn 100%. Works for me. Alright, smooth sailing, we get a Molten Egg early on, which is really nice. Any attacks we add from now on are going to be upgraded. We know that this Elite, or this Elite, whichever one we choose to face, will not be the Gremlin Knob, or maybe we even want to face the Burning One. Although that means missing a fire, so probably not. Molten Egg is sweet. Molten Egg Dagger Throw is sweeter. It's a 12 damage card. That's pretty good. That is pretty good. I don't see anything wrong with a second Piercing Whale either, mind you. Yeah, I'm really inclined to take this given that it's a 12 damage attack. Let's do that. Given that we're going to be wanting to play it a lot, I think Dash is probably a solid upgrade. As would be Dagger Spray. Our next fight could well be... We're gonna go here, right? Yeah, I'm not fighting... Two more elites, am I? No. Hmm, maybe. I could trade a fire for an elite, but that's a little risky. Anyway, I'm thinking this fight could be the four, uh, four gremlins or five slimes. So I'm gonna upgrade Dagger Spray first, and then at this fire we're gonna upgrade Dash. And hopefully that's good enough. I also wanted to upgrade Neutralize somewhere in there, but eh. Did not happen. That's 12, this is 12. Okay. I think we're willing to play the, the Neutralize Defend event here, because otherwise we're taking a little bit too much damage. Alternately, can we split here? We have another 18, 21 damage. 21 would bring you down to 39. 39 is not a split. Okay. Take three and be okay with that. Good old Dash Survivor. Okay, that was a split already? Yeah. Eight cards every turn. No problem. Sure makes these slimes a lot less impactful when we're able to just draw through them, no problem. You know what would be really sweet is any sort of relic that triggers every time we shuffle the draw pile, like uh, the Abacus or the Sundial. Would both be incredible here. Even more card draw. Thousand Cuts seems okay on the surface, but this card will only ever do up to six per turn if we're triggering Pocket Watch. I really think the Pocket Watch and the Thousand Cuts are pointing the deck in different directions, and I'm I'm a lot a lot more hesitant to take this when I am pretty actively disincentivized from using it. So I'd rather have a Piercing Whale, I think. 
Let's grab another excellent block card. And then with two Piercing Whales, we're set up really well for Act 2. Three hundred gold, you say? Sure. I'll take three hundred gold early in the run. We're gonna cruise into Act 2, hitting a shop for like five hundred gold. And that is gonna be sweet. I am excited for that. Okay, now we're upgrading our dash. 13 block, 13 damage, played like every other turn. We can use some of our gold to either get a heal here, which I'm actually not opposed to, or removing a strike. Or maybe even neutralize? This is currently neutralize is the only thing that ever turns off the pocket watch. So what if I removed it? Is that a good enough reason to do that? I don't think it is. I do like the idea of removing a strike, though. Certainly we're we're happy to add more attacks to this deck when we have a Molten Egg. They're guaranteed to be upgraded. Do I need the 16 hit points? We have an Elite and a boss. I may need to rest at this fire if I don't go for the heal here. Let's lose a strike. We definitely know we're not fighting uh, Gremlin Knob. After all. Really nice piercing whale draw. That's what, 15 damage? Because yeah, otherwise Survivor Defend neutralizes what I have to play, but I can do piercing whale. Defend strike. Let's just draw more cards. I want to see Dash Dagger Spray next turn. Perfect. Couldn't ask for a better series of cards. Remove Survivor. Survivor's a pretty good card. I'm pretty... Pretty hard pressed to find a situation where I want to remove it from the deck. Good bronze. That's... Probably better than a draw potion. At the moment. Uh, it'll help us against birds in the next act. It'll help us potentially against Guardian. Here's our first poison. The more often we draw poison cards, the better they are. So I'm really encouraged to take this, I think. Let's grab that. It'll also help a lot against Legavillain. And we're also okay with cards that like don't really do anything right now because again we are habitually drawing eight per turn, so we can we can have cards that are completely dead for now and it's fine. So we look at seven other cards. Event first. Event first. Hmm. If it's a health draining event, I'd like to know how much I lost to the elite first. So I'm gonna take a weird choice and change my mind. It is important to kill one quickly. We're not that worried about the dazes, though. Again, we're drawing a lot of cards per turn. Removing all of the artifact with Piercing Whale sounds great. I can do Piercing Whale, Defend, Defend. That's kind of okay. Or I can do Dagger Throw, Defend, Defend. And that gives me a higher chance of killing one next turn. Next turn, if I draw Dagger Spray Dash, that is 25 damage. It's not enough to get a kill. But if I take 5 to play the Strike, it would be. And we have a pretty good chance of drawing these two cards. Let's... let's... Um, oh, and I can guarantee it with Gambler's Brew, actually. So let's assume that we are definitely playing Dagger Spray Dash next turn. Which will block for 13 and do 12 to all. So I really want this guy to be on 25. We did not draw the dagger spray. Do I want to draw it with the gambler's brew or am I okay just blocking with survivor? I'm pretty sure I'm okay just blocking with survivor. Can I block with Piercing Whale? It'd be nice to remove the artifact. I can neutralize Piercing Whale. That would take 14. I would take one hit point of damage, but then the artifact is gone. 
It's probably worth it. I'm gonna target you next. Okay, so we... No, you have to target this guy. Otherwise I'm taking more damage. So, let's block like this. It's a shame we shuffled our deck without Dagger Spray in it there, because of the order we drew cards in. But not that bad. Think we can just block? Yeah, we can just block. I'd be surprised if we take more damage this fight. To get this guy next turn. Let's play for that. Just damage them down evenly. It's the optimal strategy. Okay. One one good rare relic, two good rare relics, three good rare relics. The prayer wheel. Normal enemies drop an additional card reward. And that's a flying knee plus. Flying knee plus. And Concentrate makes for some interesting hands here. With uh, Concentrate allows me to turn a really big hand into a really strong hand. But then I don't get to play the... I don't get to draw extra next turn, and that's fine, right? Because if you, if you win the fight with your one really good hand, you don't need any more hands. Flying E just does quite a bit of damage. And that's pretty good. I think we'd rather try to spec into poison somewhat. Not like enough front-loaded damage. I'm going to choose to skip that card. And here's a merchant. Excellent. Oh, speaking... Oh! 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 Oh my goodness! <laughs> Alright, so hold on here. Oh man, this, this shop is insane. Wow. So I see a lot of things I really want here. Um, some really good two-cost cards in Crippling Cloud and Predator. There is the Mango for 14 maximum hit points. That would take us all the way to 80. That's huge. Threaded Needle for four plated armor every turn. Noxious Fumes is poison damage. Card removal is good. What's really, a, what's really got me going, though, is the Abacus. Whenever you shuffle your discard pile, gain six block. That is currently every two turns. Gain six block. That's Metallicize as an artifact, which I guess you could say is what Thread and Needle does too, but this is better. It's also cheaper, notably, much cheaper than the Thread and Needle. So we could buy Abacus plus Predator plus like Crippling Cloud or a card removal, or both even, right? We could do Predator, Crippling Cloud, Abacus, card remove, and that's insane. That is insane. That is absolutely insane. So we have 143 left. That is actually not enough to, to card remove Crippling. Damn it. That is not enough. How do I feel about Bane Plus? Not bad, actually. Not bad at all. Okay, I think we beat Guardian by... Do we just want to take an upgrade Crippling Cloud? Because that's pretty damn good. Upgraded Crippling Cloud is incredibly good for Act 2. You feel bad about a main plus? That's fair. It's not the greatest card. Having four strikes though, we just get a just get a Pandora's box. It'll be fine. This deck actually could take Pandora's because of the dash and two piercing whales, so it'd be it'd be okay. Ah. 
And I, if only I had slightly more money. Damn. Curses. I really want that crippling cloud. I am willing to buy it. Alright. It is decided. We're gonna upgrade it too. Just the amount of AoE poison that this represents is so powerful when it comes to dealing with Act 2. Alright, Guardian. 26 health should be plenty here. At least that's what I'm gonna tell myself. Yeah, it is. We can transform him on turn 1 here. <laughs> Just same as your problem, IRL. If only I had slightly more money here. All of my problems would go away. No reason not to play neutralize. Uh, well, actually, there is a reason not to play neutralize. It gives me a free turn next turn. I would like to do that. So we know we're going to poison him anyway. Yeah, crippling cloud deadly. Which means we get to play all this for free. I said, what? The Last two cards of the piercing whales. I like it. Abacus. Thanks, Abacus. Oh, that's right. If you transform him by doing that, then stuff happens. It's 20 block. Oh well. Now he gets a free turn, I guess. Average is out in the end. Am I just dash defending, or can I play the poison? My best play would be poison, defend, defend. Eh. Not that excited about that. This does three, and we'll bring him down to 12, so I'll actually prevent a damage with it. And it didn't turn off the pocket watch that turn. Calculated. Okay, this will full block for me. Which lets me play another strike. So we're gonna neutralize. For optimum damage, we gotta do it in this order, I think. So if we uh, transform him too early, we miss out on some damage. And wouldn't that be sad? Thanks, Pocket Watch. Good fight. Very easy combat, as I kind of expected it would be. Even though I, I opened the stream by talking about not underestimating Guardian. But... Sometimes you can. And those times are when you have a pocket watch. Huh. Well, those are good cards. Sneaky Tinker, you're still kicking around. I'm very curious what to, as to what you would pick here. As the choice between Glass Knife Plus and Corpse Explosion is a difficult one, I think. Glass Knife versus Corpse Explosion, if the Glass Knife wasn't upgraded, much harder choice. But upgraded Glass Knife for 24 damage. We already have a lot of really effective ways to deal with multiple enemies. Although Corpse Explosion does make that a lot simpler. Somebody's asking what the Abacus Relic is, it's the Abacus. Every time we shuffle our discard pile, gain 6 block. I pick Alchemize in a heartbeat. This doesn't quite seem like the sort of deck that wants an Alchemize. Spire Info is back, yes. Thank goodness.
I suppose it's really a question of, like, are we going to find a two-mana card or not? Last night is so much front-loaded damage. Hmm. Corpse Explosion, when I get to the, the two elites before the heart, I will be really happy if I have it. God, will I ever be happy to have it. Alright, I'll take a Corpse Explosion. What do you got for me, boss relics? Hmm. Three curses and three relics from Calling Bell. An extra card per turn from Ring of the Snake, so that could be... Six normally, or nine in on pocket watch turns. But one less on turn one. Or Suzu, gain an extra energy, but we can no longer obtain potions. We've added a lot of two-cost cards to the deck. I do really like the additional energy. Suzu's a tough sell, though. Suzu's definitely a tough sell. Potions are very good against the heart. And, like, in general. Told me Alchemize was the pick? Yeah, Alchemize Sozu. The easiest, easiest combo in the world. I really don't want Calling Bell very much. Depending on what the curses are. Like, some of the curses are are less bad with a, call it, with a, uh, a pocket watch. Some of the curses are more bad with a pocket watch. This does trigger the Abacus a little bit more. Pushing Pelt next relic if I take the Sozu. Just trying to picture how we deal with elite fights in Act 2 if we don't take Sozu here. Like, our turn's gonna be what? Like, Predator and Play Survivor? That's not good enough against an Act 2 Elite. We have to, like, Corpse Explosion Dash. That's a lot better. Or get be able to, like, Crippling Cloud and play two blocks. I'm gonna try the Sozu here, and we'll we'll see if we end up regretting it. It's always tough giving up potions. But with the fourth energy, I feel very capable in my abilities to fight uh, fight elites this act. Although I'm not going to skip two fires to get the burning elite, so whatever. Uh, we're definitely going to fight two elites. This one and one of these two. Get four fires. Get a shop to remove a strike. Sounds adequate. That just removes two artifacts. Not that excited by that. I'll remove one artifact with the Piercing Whale. How about that? Okay, I can re remove the remaining two artifact with Corpse Explosion here, or I can just do 18 damage. How much damage am I drawing next turn? Because he's only going to have... Very little health if I do that. I like the idea of this having very little health. Alright, so currently Abacus is always going to trigger on turn 3. Get dunked baseball. Deadly poison plus. Another piercing whale. Absolutely yes to both of those things. Absolutely yes to both of those things. No question in my mind that we want another Deadly Poison and we want another Piercing Whale. We don't want to get the deck too thick, because again, Abacus will get worse and worse and worse as we get... Uh... Is it not working? Oh, it's, it's the Abacus. 
There you go. Gotta, gotta remember the the. It counts. Eighty-five G for a relic still leaves me enough to remove a card. Sure. Or wait, no, it doesn't. Hold on. I didn't buy a card removal. I need seventy-five gold. Hold on. How does math work? One fifty-nine minus eighty-five is one seventy-four. Or is 74 gold, so I'm one off, but we're having a hallway fight, so I will get enough. Alright. Oh, that was disgusting! <laughs> the gambling chip! Alright, we're just gonna assemble every good rare relic in one in one run. Start up combat, discard any number of cards, and draw that many. So that puts us closer to our first Abacus proc. If we choose to shuffle cards, it also just makes our, our turn one a lot better. That's, that is a good, good find. On Silent, I would say that Gambling Chip's probably one, one of the best relics in the game. Basically. Piercing Whale, Crippling Cloud, ruins this guy. Shuffle everything else, because we're not playing anything else. Kind of might as well. Just to, again, get Abacus a little bit closer. The big attack? How dare you. Make me frail. There's really no benefit to playing or not playing any of these, so I won't. Wow, I actually, for once, managed to not draw enough block. Oh wait, there it is. Never mind. Or we can just kill him, also. Rip potions forever. A second copy of Dash Plus? I mean, sure, right? Sure. We're trying to use Pocket Watch to proc Abacus more. Well, it's more its more along the lines of we're already wanting to use the Pocket Watch to draw a million cards. Um, so we might as well buy the Abacus. Is the idea, Ryan. I will definitely take a Dash Plus. Number two. Definitely do that. This I think... Th yeah, we're skipping that. Okay, we can purge a card here. Do I want an event or a hallway fight? Well, I'm missing out on the good path if I go the event, so let's not do that. Fair enough. Okay, there's nice stuff here, but we're just going to remove a strike. Good talk. Okay, Corpse Explosion is yes. In this fight. Draw all the other good damage cards. Corpse Explosion, Dagger Spray, Crippling Cloud. Target, er, sorry, Corpse Explosion, Dagger Throw, dag Dagger Spray, Dagger Throw. Puts one almost all the way dead, as is. Don't want to play Neutralize, because we'd love to draw more cards. More of a Sundial fan? Hey, if we had the Sundial, we would take it. Good fight. Eh, this is okay. This is better. We have a lot of poison now, right? Crippling Cloud, Corpse Explosion, two deadly poisons. A Catalyst is a pretty good fit for the deck, I would say. Yeah? Yeah. I will happily take that. 
Oh, hello, Dagger Spray. I see you showed up at the exact correct time. Oh man, have you ever. Um, probably want to... Crippling Cloud? Hmm. I could do Crippling Cloud Corpse Explosion? To kill them both? Or I can do Dagger Spray Predator? No, that doesn't do anything. We want to play this. Which means Corpse Explosion is the slightly better play than Dagger Spray, but only slightly. It's actually only one more damage to the Gremlin Leader either way. Hilarious. Ooh, he went for the attack. Fascinating. Okay, no need to play that. Deadly Poison gonna be better than Dash. I guess it depends on how many turns I expect this to go. This is 5 per turn, this is 13 now. Oh, we've got a Catalyst too? That tilts it even more in the favor of uh, Poison. So Catalyst makes him die next turn. So I just Catalyst... Alright, kill him now, actually. Brilliant. Good fight. Holy crap, this deck is strong. A runic dodecahedron. If we're at full health, we gain an extra energy. An upgraded die 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 if we want more AoE, or a piercing whale if we want yet another piercing whale. Which is great, because we haven't found any dexterity yet. Have too many good two cost cards in your hand and can't decide which one's the best to play. Yeah, that's that's exactly what this deck is, basically. Just draw eight cards and, you know, play two two cost cards among them. Should I remove neutralize? Maybe? Maybe. So for collector, am I gonna need block or we got a catalyst? Alright. Piercing well. <laughs> It's like, do we need damage or block to beat Collector? Let me take a real long, hard look at the cards of the deck. Hmm, I wonder. So we're gonna go this way. Fight one of these elites. And probably ruin their face. Neutralize helped make sure I had perfect against Guardian. Well, that's true. That is absolutely true. Okay, I don't want to draw you again. Um, I'd like to draw a dash so I can do dash corpse explosion. That would be ideal. Ooh, I didn't draw one. I'm gonna play the dagger spray rather than the corpse explosion just to make sure that the mystic is forced to heal next turn. Perfect. Well, kind of perfect. Wasn't my dream turn or anything. This is closer to my dream turn, though. Do Piercing Whale Deadly, or I can play Dash. Let's do Piercing Whale Deadly. How does the Mystic work? So, the Mystic's AI, if you're... And I'd say this is information that's really relevant to, to you if you are climbing the middle ascensions. Like, if you're if you're trying to get... If you're working on, like, ascension... Trying to get up to ascension 10 or so. This fight's a really good one to be aware of. So, the Centurion on his turn, he does one of two things. Either he attacks you with this, uh, this attack, or he'll block 20 on, or I think it's 15 on this difficulty. He'll block on the Mystic. Uh, the Mystic's AI is more complicated. If they're both healthy, then she'll either buff strength, or she will attack you and make you frail. And those are both pretty bad. 
if there's enough hit points missing between the two of them combined, uh, it's 16 hit points normally. Or if you're on Ascension 17, it's 20 hit points. Then she'll do her AoE heal instead. And she'll do that every single turn that hit points are missing. Um, unless she's already done it twice in a row. If she's done it twice in a row, she'll be forced to do something different for one turn. She'll go then back to healing again up to two times in a row if hit points are missing. So whether the Mystic is healing or not is something you should always know with certainty. Uh, like, there's enough hit points missing. I know that this is a heal and not a strength buff, for example. I know that with 100% certainty. Also, if you kill the Mystic first, then the Centurion, instead of his uh, block, he'll do a times 3 attack that's pretty spooky. You generally don't want that to happen. Alright. What is my turn here? I can do Piercing Whale... Can I kill you? No. Okay, so we should try to block. Am I willing to take one to get Corpse Explosion down? Nope. So I'm already over the uh, limit on Pocket Watch here. Oh, that was a strength buff. Wait, what? Did she already heal twice in a row? She might have. Either way. I believe what I... Like, the logic I just talked about is 100% correct. I think I just applied it wrong. <laughs> I lost track of where the fight had gone. I'm pretty sure. But now I'm doubting myself. <laughs> Not gonna kill him yet. Ideally, I want him to explode. Okay, so for example, this turn, the Mystic healed twice in a row the last two turns, and then this was a force to not heal. Definitely feeling pretty good about the Corpse Explosion. Blur is kind of tempting. I'm really more interested in like a... a footwork kind of deal. for the blocking right now. I'm down to skip these, truthfully. Centurion's eyes look like pretty eyelashes. Isn't it like snakes or something? Centurion's armor is really interestingly designed. Double skip. Yeah, I'm thinking double skip here. I was also thinking maybe the Burning Elite. We are Actually, only skipping one fire? Hold on. I thought it was two fires we're skipping. I should I should take out the Burning Elite while I have an opportunity to do so. We're really strong right now. Gurya. Gains strength at rest sites up to three times. Hmm. I don't feel like that's where most of my damage is going to come from. It would up my front-loaded damage a little bit to lift. I'd be more interested if I'd taken the glass knife. I think we're gonna take the key here. Time for three strength book of stabbing. No, it's regenerating slavers, fortunately. Um, I like piercing whale, I like crippling cloud, I like corpse explosion, I like catalyst. What am I actually gonna do with the turn though? We want to crippling cloud, corpse explosion, maybe? No, hold on. Crippling Cloud, Piercing Whale, draw into Corpse Explosion. Shit. I didn't want the Corpse Explosion yet. What I wanted this turn was like Crippling Cloud, Piercing Whale, Piercing Whale. And then the next turn was Corpse Explosion Catalyst. Piercing Catalyst is really nice. The question is, do I draw the Corpse Explosion again quickly enough to kill the Red Slit to, uh... to do the thing properly? I guess we're discarding it then. So that we can redraw it more quickly.
Or am I playing Crippling Cloud, Piercing Whale, and just full blocking this turn? I have to survive a long time if I'm doing that. Like this. Might not end up corpse exploding all of them. Might end up just like beating them the regular way. Which is fine. Going to be vulnerable next turn, but I have double piercing whale, so I don't even care. Plus I have Abacus. I dare say this is going well. Nice try, nerds! Could have lined up a kill on the red one, but I'm more interested in drawing more cards. That's my honest answer there. Oh, did not get the corpse explosion. Hmm. Well, that's a bit of a pickle. I can kill both the red and the blue this turn. If I dagger throw. I could use my one and only Gambler's Brew for the entire run to try to get into the Corpse Explosion. That doesn't seem that appealing. Uh, because it's every time you shuffle. Yeah, Ryan. Every single time. If, if you didn't realize that, that might be why you haven't thought very much, very highly of it. It's every single time. I'm gonna give myself a chance to draw Corpse Explosion. Nope. Oh, that didn't kill. Actually, I thought that would... I needed to play Catalyst, not uh, Deadly. Whoops! Well, that's an upgrade I lost. We do get to Corpus Explosion, though. Hooray! Completely unnecessary misplays. Tori's nice. Every time we would take five or less unblocked attack damage. Take a Nightmare, because of course we will. We have a Catalyst in the deck. We have a lot of things in the deck that Nightmare's really good with. So let's just grab a Nightmare. We're gonna rest here now. Am I taking bites? Absolutely not. Alright. Whoopsie daisy. Elite first, I think. Okay, Book of Stabbing without strength. Seems fine. Let's draw some block in the form of... Apparently just Piercing Whales and nothing else. I could do Deadly Poison Catalyst on turn one. That's pretty good. There's the dash. Do I want to play that instead of Piercing Whale? No, I don't think I do. I think I just want to get 21 poison going here. Take a little bit of damage. That was also four cards played, notably. And that's fine. Seems like a good turn. Good fight. Vajra, start combat with one strength. Don't mind if I do. Fumes is even more poison. It's also a decent nightmare target. Not a good one, but a decent one. Uh, neither of the other cards are any good. 
Though honestly, I don't think I need fumes. We have enough ways to get poison started. Maybe I can skip it here. Piercing well greater than apparition. Yeah. Decidedly. Decidedly. I think we're cool just keeping the deck, you know, as reasonably thin as it is. We're drawing through it in three or four turns. Every time. Oh, this is this is gonna be great for us. Sneko. You know, if I'm fighting Sneko, why don't I add a bunch of copies of Dash to my deck? So that those can all be random costed. It's like I'm playing with the real Sneko Eye. I've got a million cards and they're all random cost. Beautiful. Yep, that sure feels like Sneko Eye to me. Fuse for artifact removal. Actually, not the worst idea, truthfully. Don't mind that at all. Eh. Actually, hold on. Flechette's plus? Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna take this. Deal six damage for each skill in your hands. That seems... That seems okay here. I'm gonna make a nightmare a little bit more playable. Hopefully that'll work out. Alright, so our goal here is to draw Nightmare Catalyst together on turn one, apparently. And to also find a poison card. Please. Damn it. Still doing it. If I draw any poison next turn. This will be amazing. Beautiful. Am I actually playing any of these this turn? So what, what happens if I just deadly catalyst, catalyst, catalyst? So we go 7, 21, 60 something, over 100. I just take this damage and win. I can try to take less. Do I, do I want to? I'm pretty okay just winning this fight. Yeah, I'm pretty okay just winning this fight. Hold on, I'm getting greedy. What if I play a little bit in between? We can save some health here. GG. That's a Wraith form. We already have a Nightmare. I'm gonna click on this. Ah, wait, Beast Statue. The natural... The natural follow-up to the Zozu. Hey, Rhoda. Is your name, is your name based off uh, the, the Fus Rhoda from Skyrim? I like the name. Screw upgrades. I would agree with you, Anawelb, except for the part where we have a Wraith form. And this is an incredibly important upgrade for us to get. So I... Obviously this does nothing. We don't want to take this, so that leaves uh, Ori. Choose and add five cards to the deck, which we 
probably will skip all of them, but if we see, like, another Wraith form or another Nightmare, we'll take. But this is probably mostly just, like, skip the boss relic. And I'm okay with that. That's pretty good. Probably okay with a leg sweep here. Third dash plus... Fourth dash plus? <laughs> Collector bonus on dash plus? Probably not. I'm okay with a leg sweep, though. Okay with a leg sweep. Skip everything else. We're we're beyond the point where dash plus is particularly good. All right, so we took out the super elite. That means our pathing through the act is just like whatever the hell we want it to be. I do like hitting a lot of fires. We mostly want to upgrade our wraith form, so we can get one upgrade. Go like this way. Yeah, this is higher value, right? Yeah. So we want to hit these two elites and two fires. Then like this way or something? Looks like we're getting all the events out of the way early. I could maybe change my routing if I get an I Am Rich opportunity and want to take it. Let's definitely go to the store. We can remove a strike there. And as we all know, removing strikes is the most important thing in the game. True facts. Okay, link sweep. Digger throw? Currently taking one. Okay with that. Okay, so this won't weaken him any further, because he's already weak. Um, we just mostly need to survive until next turn. A well laid plans would go really well in this deck. It'd be tough to get into play, but it'd be totally worth it. Man, that is a really good flechettes. Dash number five. Finisher. Definitely not a uh, not a card that does a whole lot in here. You haven't seen Mind Blue in like a week? That's horrible, probs. Have have you been getting to Act Three? <laughs> is is my follow up question to that? Have you been getting to Act Three to look at it? No, that, that does sound terrible, truthfully. Hmm, I'm kind of okay with a Writhe, given that I have a gambling chip. And I'm struggling to remember the last fight we had where we got through the deck more than one time. But no. Just lose three max. Three max is nothing. If I had an upgraded Wraith form, I'd be a lot more willing to take this fight. I'm scared of this one. We're not quite quick enough to deal with these two. But I take the portal events? Nah. We are we are a long way away from being able to guarantee that we win against the heart. I do have Corpse Explosion. That doesn't mean that I can like play it and not take damage on the opening turns. Uh, pass here. I am scared. Okay. Oddly smooth stone. Start combat with one dex. Not bad. That does make our blocks a little bit better. It's not amazing, though. I can't also remove strike. Our blocks are so bad, though. Hey, Vladimir! Things are going well. We 
currently debating what to do in the store. And I'm very sad that I'm five gold off from uh, card remove smooth stone. If I had taken that uh, that double combat and won, we would have the money for this. And I wouldn't have to choose. Or I come to go with our wraith form is pretty sweet. That is true. Also with piercing whales, actually, that's really good. All right. And that I can buy alongside a card remove? All right, deal. Sold to the man in the hat. I should be removing uh, neutralize. Where am I from? I'm from the east coast of the US. JJ. Tis where I reside. Oh. Rude. Leg sweep wraith form or my flechettes plus. Rip flechettes plus, I guess. Am I willing to lose leg sweep? It's a lot of upfront damage. It's my only good block. Well, it's a yeah, this is a great block card. All right, see you later, Flechettes Plus. I appreciated you when you were in the deck, but now you're gone, and all I have is a million copies of Wraithform. Ah, there's Mind Bloom. Oh, we're already past the uh, the Iron Rich point. It switches over pretty quickly. So we could upgrade all cards, but no longer be able to heal. If we wanted to. We have a pretty heavily upgraded deck. We get all the defense and the survivor upgraded. That's a pretty big deal. As well as all the piercing whales. It's actually a really big deal. Or we can get another rare relic by fighting a boss here. Was Flesh just cast it all? Yeah, we cast it like twice. Weather's been pretty cold over here. Let's see, what, what was it today where I am? It's like 40 degrees out today. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty cold. I think it snowed a little bit yesterday. It's the I Am Rich point. I think it's, um... So how this event works, this last choice is either I Am Healthy or I Am Rich, depending on the floor count. I think it's floor 41, actually, where it switches from I am rich to I am healthy. But the the long and short of it is first half of the act, I am rich. Second half of the act, I am healthy. I'm strongly debating the upgrade all. I think we could do really well in most fights if all these cards are upgraded. Who are we fighting as our boss? Timekeeper. And he will reward me for having upgraded block cards. War is the safer choice. Yeah, we cannot rest to heal at all if we if we take I Am Awake. We also got 100 gold, which is pretty relevant. It's another card removal. Fight the boss. Not again! There we go. Hey, got him. Ice cream? I don't think that helps me that much. Sometimes it does. Energy now conserved between turns. There's our Flechettes Plus back if we want them. <laughs> Shotty five. I I grew up in Canada, so I I'm pretty familiar with the the Celsius way of measuring stuff. But nobody tells me the temperature in Celsius here. I have to convert it in my head. This could be piercing well number five. There is no such thing as too many copies of this card. Adrenaline plus ice cream. Turns off the pocket watch is mainly my complaint there. I should be more okay with pocket watch being turned off sometimes, but I don't know. It served me so well. Uh, 
How much do I need upfront damage? After that display, not much. Let's grab one more piercing well. And fight a Reptomancer. Nightmare Wraith Form sounds fine. I have no reason to believe that I'm going to need anything other than that. Piercing Whale or Calcum is good enough block. Let's poison the Reptomancer. Is there a bot for looking up items? Yes, there is! Spire Info Bot! If you type exclamation point followed by the name of any item, item like so, then you'll get a description from Spire Info. La la la, I'm invincible every turn. This game is easy. Let's see, the odds I don't draw a Wraith Form are significant enough. Just wait this out. Yeah, I'm really glad I bought that Oracle That is That is paying off right here in a big way. Change the animation for uh, when Reptomancer dies. That's interesting. Bottled Lightning. Choose a skill. Start combat with this card in your hand. Oh my. What do we want to bottle? Do we bottle Nightmare so that I can just I can do something stupid on turn one with either Wraith Form or Catalyst? You know, whatever else I draw with the gambling chip. Do I nightmare? Do I bottle a piercing whale or a corpse explosion or a crippling cloud? Those are other good options. Bottled nightmare seems insane. Just gonna go ahead and bottle that. Recall before I forget. Usually, usually around when I recall is this half of the act. Oh, he's attacking me. How droll. I need a piercing whale, please. Thank you. Figured there were enough of them in the deck. I guess that's our nightmare target. There are compelling reason to play one now, yeah. Yeah, there is. Just for complete safety in this fight. Yeah, because he might have been doing the big attack this turn. Jerk. Yeah, like, worst case scenario, we can nightmare away the, uh, or we can gamble away the nightmare. We don't end up playing it.
Easy game. Play two week and play zero block. All right. What I'm talking about. I get to I get to Orichalcum after playing the Link Sweep. Okay, can no longer become frail. That would matter more if we ever blocked. We could have had, what, seven copies of Dash Plus by now? Something like that? Figure we want to up our poison just a little bit more. Hmm. I may Nightmare Piercing Whale here. <laughs> nope. My plan is to one that covers more advanced topics. I've been thinking about it, Vladimir. It's um, partially what I've been... I've been trying to feel out what the response has been to my new player guide, and if, if people find it really helpful, then I'd love to do more that are on more advanced topics. I can, I can think of uh, a couple topics right off the top of my head, like I'd like to do a ascension climbing guide, a heart killing guide. I'm sure there's something else I could target specifically as well. There is still no... there's. There's still no limit on these, right? Yeah, we just take more. Take more copies of Piercing Well. All day, every day. Okay, we actually have to block this turn. Hold on. This is complicated. I can't just Nightmare Wraith Form. Because I'm looking at 20 damage. Hmm. By Crippling Cloud, this becomes 6 plus 8, I think. So I would take 1 if I played the dash. Do I ever get a setup? I think I've taken a setup once. Ever. <laughs> Pretty much. Basically once ever. what I planned on doing with the turn, it'll work out, whatever. And that once was a learning experience, so the once worked out reasonably well. Um, the situation that I recall it being under was that I had... Commander, we've just received the support of another council member. It was, a, it was an already upgraded setup, and I believe I had Runic Pyramid, which mo both made it a lot better. Vladimir, welcome to the council. Thanks so much for that Twitch Prime sub. Can't remember if that's a welcome back or not. I know you've been around a long time, certainly. So either way, great to have you. Hope you're having an awesome night. Your cards. So I think I definitely like to highlight for this deck is that the entire time they've been playing this, I've I've like triggered Pocket Watch pretty much every single turn, forever. And now that we're, you know, most of the way through Act 3, it turns out it is still doing really good things for us. Like, this has never become obsolete at any point.
One, two, three. Okay, so you're already dead. Let me do this. Also, not sure if I've taken any damage this axe. Commander, we've just received the support of another. Celeros! Welcome to the council! Thanks so much for that Twitch Prime sub. Good to have you amongst our ranks as well. Hopefully, at the end of the month, my report card will be acceptable. Yep. Let's take more of them. There is a limit. I'm not <laughs> sure where it lies. This is the deck currently. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Maybe I should upgrade one of them. Sure. Why not? It's opening with a big attack, huh? Hmm. Dash Lake Sweep will block. Go like this. Certainly I don't play Catalyst here, alright. Next turn's gonna be a little scary. We're gonna have a lot of Piercing Whales and maybe a Wraith Form. Nah, it's not gonna be that scary. Worst case scenario, I do have a Gambler's Brew. He's just doing a multi-attack. Well, guess what? I am Piercing Well for that. Get ruined. Remember, kids, as long as you're playing the correct cards, you don't need to play more than uh, two cards a turn. I'd really like to be able to hold on to that Wraith form. Actually, I didn't even need to play that, did I? Gonna play Dash instead of Piercing Whale? Oh well. Okay, this is complicated. How many piercing whales do I have? Seven. <laughs> Seven is the number of piercing whales that I have in the deck. Deck looks like this. <laughs> okay, so that's a full block. We can either try to have two cards next turn. Which is iffy. Or we can spring him now. That works. Oh, we're taking damage. How rude. Think I want to play that? Just hold on to the energy. Oh yeah, that's right, we have a uh, Tori after all. At some point, we will draw Catalyst and Nightmare together, I swear. It's gotta happen. Damn it.
Okay, that'll block with Tori. That's fine. That's fine. This will also block with Tori. We're quickly approaching the second phase of the fight. Um, we're going to want to put him below half health this turn. Definitely have below half health this turn, so that next turn, instead of hitting me really hard, he's uh, healing himself. Which we can eff effortlessly do here. Let's just hold energy. There's no reason to play a uh, anything that costs anything. So he's going to remove all of his uh, debuffs and heal himself up, and that's okay. We just end turn. We bank a lot of energy so that we're a lot better shape for the second half of this fight. Hmm. I may just uh, nightmare a different card here. I'm okay nightmaring deadly poison, and that'll give us enough poison for a catalyst to do a good job. Do that. Draw 10? Uh, we don't want to draw 10. Because we're already drawing two more from... We're adding three deadly poison cards into our hand and we're drawing two additional cards off of Predator. So the pocket watch isn't actually going to do anything here, which means we can leg sweep to make sure he's weak next turn. So we have a full hand of 10 anyway. I think now is the correct time to play this. And we just play all the poison. Feels correct. Okay, good fight. Pretty easy boss fight. Act 3 was complete cakewalk for this deck. I suppose so was Act 2. The only reason we took any damage in Act 2 was that one turn against the three slavers where I completely screwed up. But otherwise, this deck has kind of raffle stomped ever since picking up the pocket watch at the start of the run. Wonder why that might be. Okay, we're almost full health. Do I get... I probably get more value out of one of these upgrades than I do... Out of, um... Resting, I'm sure of it. Oh wait, actually, hold on. Excuse me, no I don't. We have Vernicto Decahedron. Internet told you to cheer now to be number one. Did it also tell you you're the one millionth visitor to my page? You've won a special prize? The prize is... My stream. You get to watch my stream. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna rest because of Runic Dodecahedron. Kaka! There's the well-aid plans we've wanted for so long. Is it too late for it now? Bag of prep means higher likelihood that we get a good nightmare on turn one. Bearing in mind that we have a bottled nightmare. Bag of prep seems really good, actually. So does well-aid plans. Man. Well laid plans, one million percent, says Ryan. I don't disagree with that. Like, being able to, to guarantee that we nightmare one of these two things is pretty important. I think I can't argue with that. And I would take a potion if we didn't already, if we didn't have Sozu. Should with the gambler's brew? I wonder if we were meant to use Gambler's Brew on turn one 
to guarantee a sweet nightmare catalyst or something against the heart. I don't know. We're in this fight now. I don't want any of this. Better. Much better. Could Nightmare the Wraith form and even play that Wraith form. Let's just be invincible this fight, huh? Sounds good to me. Do I think it's consistently winnable? Heck yeah, I do, Goodwill. Absolutely. I am learning more and more about this game every day that I play it. Just removing artifact here. We're again blocking for full with Orichalcum. Guess we corpse explode you, huh? Presumably twice. Now all I have to do is play like one card a turn. Okay, there's the second corpse explosion. So we need two stacks on this guy for double health explosion to kill this guy. Which happens next turn. Okay. Okay, I get him down to zero. Because I was going to take damage from burns and stuff, which will turn off the Dodecahedron, which is actually a really big deal here. Did I not take any amount of damage? Not bad. Sneko Skull, whenever we apply poison, gain one additional poison. There's a malaise for us. We're just going to go ahead and grab that. Not that we needed it, but we have it now. We have it now. So I predict absolutely dumpstering the heart. Let's see how that goes. Hello, giant heart man. These are not the cards I want. That's more like it. That is much more like it. So I can Nightmare Catalyst Crippling Cloud. Kind of want to play that malaise too, huh? Is dumpstering positive? I am positive I'm going to dumpster him. So I really don't want to be losing any health. Like, normally I wouldn't mind taking beat of death damage here, but Runic De Decahedron going away is kind of an issue. So to that end, I'm probably going to defend Crippling Cloud Nightmare the Catalyst. Or instead of, um, or I could just Nightmare the Catalyst. Well, we don't know. We have no poison coming up. Okay, I have to start with this. That works fine. Okay. I have a gambling ping, so I can hopefully draw into the Wraith form. Yeah, drawing into Wraith form would be ideal here. If I want to get perfect on the fight, mind you. If I want to win the fight, I can just take this 50 damage and we'll be okay. We will absolutely win if I just take this 50 damage. Zero question. So maybe I just want to take the 50 damage then.
I think so. Sure. Enjoy 200 poison, Mr. Nerd. Don't matter none. Whoa! What? That's so cool! I've never seen that. That must be brand new, huh? What a cool animation they added. I like that. Well, either way, GG. We're intangible and all that. So we would block this if it wasn't dying. Yeah, that was the that was a new animation for the heart's uh, strength buff. Yeah. It's really cool. I like it. Have you seen the um, have you seen the new Reaper animation probs? Because that is really cool too. They've been upping their game on the card animations. Save potion for next turn. You got it. Yeah, there's a new Reaper animation that is super cool. Actually, I can show it off really quick. Hold on. <laughs> 